So number six then from paper one of the 2021 Higher Maths resource paper, seven marks here, functions of a function leading on to complete the square. They've done that before, use that. The first part's going to produce some quadratic expression and then in the last part, you've got to form it into a completed square. Well, what does it say? You've got the two functions, f of x and g of x. And they need to find, first of all, f of g of x and then g of f of x. Right, well, so you just do what it says. So f of g of x means f is going to act on g of x. x squared minus 2x. So what does f do to anything it gets hold of? Well, whatever it gets hold of, it takes it and doubles it. So I'll have two of them. And then just adds on five. Now, in fact, those are the two marks. You get the first mark for substituting in g of x into f of x as its input. And the second mark for carrying out the operations required by f of x, which is to double what you put in and then add five. Now, you would actually just tidy that up anyway. It doesn't take much more. You're going to be using the full result later. And there's no point leaving it like that, unless, of course, the other expression had a similar bracket and there could be factorizations involved, but there won't be in this case. So 2x squared minus the 4x plus the 5 for the first part. So what's this one? G, similarly, what's f of x? It's 2x plus 5. Only this time, you're not going to get the mark for that because you've already demonstrated you know what it means in part A. So they're not going to just double up the marks for you. So what does G do to whatever it gets hold of? Well, whatever you put in, it'll square it. So if we put in this expression, it will square that whole expression. And then it takes away two of whatever you've put in. And if you put in an expression, it'll be taking away two of that expression. Now, putting that down gets the mark, but you're going to, you know you're going to need to tidy it up. There's quite a bit of tidying up for this case because you've got to square a bracket, which applies to the last part of this pattern that you should know. Square the first, square the last, in the middle, twice the product. So square the first, twice the product is 10x, double it, 20x. Square the last, 25. Minus two times this bracket, and of course that means minus two of each of them. That's why it's in a bracket. So it'll be minus 4x and also minus 10. Tidy that up. It's only one term in x squared. I've got 2 in x, 20 take away 4, so I've got 16. And I've got 25 take away 10 for the number, so that's plus 15. And then in part C, it says express g of f of x, that's this one, minus f of g of x, that's that one, which will be a quadratic, obviously, but write it in this form. In other words, complete the square for four marks. Well, the first mark's just for obtaining this expression, which required this extra bit of working that would have been in parts A and B. So what have you got? You've got g of f of x first. So you've got the big one. It's the big one take away the wee one. It's a whole expression. So if you're going to subtract that expression, make sure you subtract all the terms in that expression by putting them in a bracket. Now you just do it. 4x squared, take away 2x squared, that'll be 2x squared. 16, take away negative. That'll be plus 4, so that'll be plus 20. That's handy, so we've got a common factor. Plus 15, take away 5, plus 10. So that's the first mark, just for obtaining that result, obtaining that quadratic. Now you've got to put your probably underline. Because that's like the end of the function of functions part. Now you've got to complete the square. Now there's two ways of doing that. There's the way of just figuring out what's actually needed to make it into an exact square, because that 10 doesn't work. Or there's the other way of comparing that expression with this expression comparing them term by term to obtain the values. I don't know if anybody actually does it that way. 
sort of anymore. You tend to just figure out a number that works. It's not really just guessing because it's quite a precise step that you go through. Because what you've got is this. If you've got x plus a squared, then it's only easy when it's a single x, when the coefficient's just one. So don't like that too. It's not that bad, it could be worse, but don't like it anyway. It'd be better if it was just a one. Because when you square that simple expression, it just becomes square the first, twice the product, square the last. Which means if you see that, it's easy to reconstruct the square. Now, if the end term doesn't work, you can still reconstruct the square because you can tell from here that it should be an x there and half of that there. So similarly here, if that was to form a square, I'd have to get rid of that too. And then it'd be an x and then half of whatever that is. And that's the technique. There's different ways of setting it out. So for this part, I could say this. Well, take that 2 out. Because I don't want the 2. I just want to say x. So I've got an x squared plus a... Take the 2 out of that as well. Whether it goes in or not, it happens to go in nicely in this case. But you don't want to involve that 10. That 10 just doesn't work. So keep the 10 out of it. So there's two ways of putting this down. You can either just do this. Leave it out of it. And not leave a space there, and then say this. Right, I know how to make a square out of that. Because if it goes x squared plus 10x, this should say x and half of that. So that should make a square that says x plus 5 squared. But that's not right, because there's another term pops out of that bracket. There's that 5 squared that should be in there. So what you then say is, well, that would work if I took away that... 5 squared, but took away that 25. Now you've got to use another bracket. Plus 10. Now there's two marks there. There's one mark for taking the 2 out of it, so you can just use the simple pattern. And there's one for constructing the square from the x and the 10, x squared and the 10x. Now you just got to figure out the number at the end. So you've got two lots of x plus 5 squared. But now you've got this part here. I don't know why I put that square there. Now you've got this part here. You've got it's not just a 25 that's going to be subtracted, it's two lots of that. So there's a 50 that's going to be subtracted. So you could either put more working down and put plus the 10 minus two lots of the 25 and then write it again. Or you could just be brave and say, well, taking away the 50 means it's minus 40. And the last mark's for getting the minus 40. Or another way of setting that would out would be this. I have to say, right, what have I got? Take that 2 out. I've got an x squared plus, whoops, a 10x. And I'm just leaving the extras, please, plus the 10. It just saves a line, putting it, putting it down this way. And then you think, right, well, what would it take to complete that square? You could always just go to the final answer here. Well, I know that x squared and 10x would be an x plus 5 all squared, but that would produce a 25. I would have to have a 25 in here to make that work. So I've sort of going down and back up. But that's an introduced 25. More than that, it's two of them. So I'd have to take away two of those 25s. And then you can put down, so that's minus 40. It's just a way of sort of compressing this into just two lines instead of three. But they're both exactly the same. They're both just saying, what do I need to complete the square? Because that 10 didn't work. So either we'd need a number that would be, maybe some of the 10 would have worked and I'd have a wee bit left over and buy yourself an ice cream. Or maybe the 10 wasn't enough and I'd end up in debt to the perfect square like I did here. But whatever, it's just a case of what's the number that I need to put in to form a perfect square. Now, the other way, by comparing the corresponding coefficients, in other words, comparing this expression to this expression would be, well, first of all, you'd have to make it look like that. Now, normally it would take a lot more space, but I'm just going to cram it in here. So if you want to multiply this out so it looks like this, so you can identify the corresponding parts, you'd have a times, then the same as this, x squared plus 2bx plus b squared, square the first square, the last, twice the product, plus c, multiplying it out, a lots of x squared is multiplying them all, plus 2abx plus ab squared, and then finally add on the c. So there's the three parts. You can compare them directly. That part should be 2x squared, so a is obviously a 2. That part should be 20x, so 2ba must be 20. 
and this number at the end should be a 10. So you know A is 2, there we are, we can fill that in. Knowing that A is 2, 2 twos are 4, 4 fives are 20, so B must be 5. And this bit, 2 times 5 squared is 25 is 50, 50 plus something makes 10, well that must be take away 40, so C is negative 40. Then you just fill them into this and you'll have reconstructed that. So that was the other way it could have been done. There is also the case where it's actually, you could just do the whole thing in your head. Because there's not a lot to it. You think, take out the two, right? So two's out of it. That's a 10. I know it gets knocked down to a five. So now I've got two X plus five squared. And you think, five squared, 25, double it, 50, take it away, minus four. You could do it all in your head. And you would get the marks if you did that. If you then demonstrated it was correct and you'd have to multiply it all out. So it doesn't save you any time doing that. <laughs>